Due to the results of the island special exam, there is a massive shift in the class rankings. However, there's little reason to worry about that right now, as the students have one full week aboard a luxury cruise ship. Early the first morning, Ayana Koji sends a message to Ichinose, just before Miyamoto asks if anyone would like to go see the rankings from the special exam. Then with a knock on the door, Ishizaki steps inside, almost forcing Ayana Koji to accompany him to view the rankings. After a bit of casual and friendly discussion, they arrive, but can't get a good look due to the crowd. Ayana Koji, however, is met with numerous uncomfortable gazes, as the third years all seem to be staring at him. A moment later, Ishizaki gives up and instead invites Ayana Koji to join him for lunch, where along the way, Nanase runs up to them, simply to say hello prompting Ishizaki to comment on Ayana Koji being friends with such a cute underclassman. Upon returning to his room, Ayana Koji finds Ike outside the door waiting for him. Ike reveals that he's officially dating Shinohara, and that he feels as though he should let Komiya know. Ayana Koji says you better be prepared to take a hit, and they proceed to the infirmary. They open the door just as a group of students leave, followed by Komiya explaining that Ryun is currently on a manhunt to find his attacker. He asks what brings them here today, causing Ike to begin stuttering, before declaring that he's officially dating Shinohara. Komiya asks him to come a little closer, and Ike does so, receiving a light thump to the chest. Komiya tells Ike that he better not make her cry, before admitting that he knew Shinohara had feelings for Ike all along. Komiya then asks to speak with Ayana Koji alone, and brings up Ryun's search for his attacker. Komiya feels like they should just let it go, so he asks Ayana Koji to keep an eye on the whole situation. The next day, Ayana Koji receives a text message from Kiriyama, asking if they can meet up. He heads to the agreed upon location to find all the third years watching him once again. Kiryun then calls Ayana Koji over, noticing that he seems to be in a bit of trouble with the third years. He tries to say it's not a big deal, but she's well aware that Ayana Koji prefers to avoid attention. She is curious as to what happened, stating that Nagumo will be a rough opponent for Ayana Koji. He actually agrees with her assessment, just as Kiriyama arrives, asking to change locations away from Kiryun. Kiriyama demands to know what happened between Ayana Koji and Nagamo, but instead of answering, he asks, When did you join Nagamo's side? Kiriyama claims not to support Nagamo, but to simply be playing by his rules. You see, third year class A has a 900 class point lead, making it near impossible for them to fail. On top of this, Nagamo rules the third years like a dictator, even controlling how many points each person is allowed to have. He maintains this power by promising to promote a certain number of students up to class A at the end of this year, which is why Kiriyama is currently acquiring favor with Nagamo. However, Ayana Koji interfered during the Uninhabited Island special exam, causing the third years to lose out on millions of private points due to Koenji winning. Then after hearing all of this, Ayana Koji still refuses to explain what happened, and simply asks for a bit more time to think this over. Just after walking away, Ayana Koji sees Nanase once again, who apparently has something important to tell him, but they are interrupted by Kobashi from Ichinose's class. She's come to invite Ayana Koji to a party, as a way to thank him for helping Shiranami during the special exam. At first he declines, but winds up giving in, as Kobashi guilt trips him into attending. Ayana Koji arrives just outside the party, debating whether or not he should just turn around and leave. Kobashi then turns the corner, opening and pushing him into the room. There is nothing but girls at this party, and the only open seat just so happens to be next to Ichinose. Though it's not long into this awkward situation that a girl named Himino excuses herself, stating that she has a headache. Ayana Koji takes this opportunity to leave as well, and notices that Himino walked away from her room. He follows her to the rear of the ship, calling her out for faking the headache, and asks why she agreed to attend. Himino states that she doesn't have much of a choice, because she has to maintain a good relationship with her class. The following day, Ayana Koji is at the front of the ship, searching for a place to eat his lunch. The third years glare as he approaches Nanase, asking what she wanted to talk about the day before. She claims it's no longer an issue, so Ayana Koji excuses himself in search of a more secluded area. Though after sitting down, he is approached by Sakayanagi, who seems to want nothing more than a friendly conversation. Just before Sakayanagi explains that she recently spoke with Ichinose. 
They discussed how Ichinose's greatest weakness is being too nice, and even touched on her feelings for Ayana Koji. Sakayanagi then teases Ayana Koji for daring to win Ichinose's heart, before moving on to the topic of the third years. He explains that he had a run-in with Nagamo on the island, which resulted in Mr. President losing to Koenji. Sakayanagi is very interested by this, but she excuses herself to take an urgent phone call. Elsewhere on the ship, you find Amasawa, thinking about how badly she wants to go visit Ayana Koji. Sakayanagi then introduces herself, immediately revealing that she's come to size up this white room student. Amasawa thinks that someone is being awfully confident, and Sakayanagi declares, I'm just that good. Amasawa reveals that she's well aware that she's being followed, and says that she's not against hitting a disabled person. Sakayanagi points out that all the White Room students are failures when compared to Ayana Koji, prompting Amasawa to exclaim, I'll take you on whenever. Kamuro then apologizes for being spotted, and Sakayanagi makes another phone call, telling Yamamura, who hasn't been noticed, to continue following Amasawa. The Ayana Koji group just rented out a private pool, but the girls are too embarrassed to leave the dressing room. During this time, Miyaki asks if Ayana Koji notices Sakura, but he avoids the question, turning it back on Miyaki. The girls step out wearing their bikinis, completely overwhelming the guy's expectations. Side note real quick, we still have a few more books to cover, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Miyaki retreats to the pool, leaving Ahira Koji all alone with two barely covered beautiful girls. Sakura flees into the water, as Hasabe explains these outfits to be Sakura's idea, and attempt at breaking out of her shell. A little while later, Sakura asks if Ayana Koji would be willing to tutor her, but he instantly makes an excuse not to. Hasabe then wonders why Ayana Koji keeps so much distance between himself and Sakura, prompting him to state that Sakura needs friends, not romance. But Hasabe thinks a little romance couldn't hurt. Ayana Koji then says that a shock is coming Sakura's way, and he wants Hasabe to support her when the time comes. We then learn that Yunikoji actually deems Sakura to be the hands down weakest member of the class. Just after leaving the pool, they watch as Nanase walks by, followed by Naka Izumi from Ryun's class. Our group then witnesses as Ike and Shinohara enter the private pool together. While chilling in their room, Miyamoto bursts inside, saying Katsuragi is in a fight with Tokido. Yunikoji immediately goes to investigate and is joined by Hiyori. Tokido despises Rian and wants to know if Katsuragi is Rian's new toy. Katsuragi says of course not, but Rian is the leader, so following some of his orders is necessary. Tokido wants Katsuragi to take over as the class leader, and winds up walking away mad after realizing that Katsuragi doesn't wish to dethrone Rian. Kiyori then offers to bring Ayana Koji into their class, before dragging him out into the open. Katsuragi says you shouldn't bring an enemy to an internal dispute, but she believes an outside perspective might help. Katsuragi states that their class needs to be more cohesive, and that it's Ryun's fault for not doing anything about it. Though Hiyori argues that Katsuragi was recruited to be a backup leader, which was Ryun's way of handling this divide. She is then asked to leave, and Katsuragi reveals that Ryun told him all about Ayana Koji's hidden strength, which he's genuinely excited to battle against. Jumping to the cafe, you find Kei hanging out with Sato. Kei can't help but to feel like something is off, as a group of nobody third years sit down next to him. You find out Kei is ready to go public with their relationship, and Sato mentions that everyone is going to be shocked. Sato also states that Kei could easily find a better guy, but Kei already believes Ayana Koji to be the best. Elsewhere on the ship, Horikita has an unexpected meeting with Ibuki. After a lot of bickering, they discuss Amasawa, which Ibuki says to be one of the strongest opponents she's ever faced. Horikita plans to investigate Amasawa, since she seems to know so much about Ayana Koji, though Ibuki thinks that's a bad idea. They move to the cafe, and Horikita explains that she's worried that Amasawa will physically attack Ayana Koji, though Ibuki thinks he could handle it. Horikita digs further into that response, causing Ibuki to reveal the rooftop incident from Volume 7. 
Horikita brings up the cryptic note, and Ibuki assumes that she was invited here today to help with this investigation. Horikita refuses to admit it. Ibuki goes to leave, only to be stopped by Horikita, who declares that Ibuki must lend her a hand, since Horikita paid for her drink. It's now the scheduled time for Ayanokoji to give his response to Ichinose, though just before answering, Nagumo intervenes. He knows they met up the final day of the exam, and even reveals that Ayanokoji is currently dating Kei Karuizawa. Ichinose asks if this is true, and Ayanokoji asks how Nagumo found out. Nagumo then leaves, but not before whispering into Ayanokoji's ear. Battle me if you want my meddling to stop. Then at this point, Ichinose is barely able to hold back the tears, as she mutters goodbye before running away. There's only three days remaining aboard the ship when the students receive a mass message from the school, inviting them to a treasure hunt with an entry fee of 10,000 points. Ayinokoji arrives to the venue to see the class 3A teacher taking the stage. There is 100 hidden stickers around the ship, and each sticker can only be redeemed by one group. The rewards range from 5,000 to 1 million points. They will, however, be allowed to pair up with one other person, which will essentially double each sticker. As a member of the student council, Horikita explains that everyone must register by paper in order to prevent fraud. Then of course, throughout this whole process, the third years never cease to stare at Ayanokoji. Shortly after the treasure hunt begins, Ayanokoji runs into Sato, who asks if he'd like to partner up. After a short conversation, he agrees, and they head downstairs to begin their search. Sato takes a bathroom break, during which Matsushita arrives, followed by a third year named Tatara, who takes one look at Ayanokoji before leaving. Sato then returns, asking if Matsushita was paired up with the third year, but she says he was just awkwardly following her around. Sometime later, Ayanokoji once again happens upon Nanase, who was once again being followed by Naka Izumi. A few minutes later, you see Ishizaki leading the way to Nishino, who is currently holding up Nanase. Rian asks about the incident with Komiya, but Nanase claims not to know anything. You see, he's well aware that Nanase has been tailing a Class 1C student named Karachi, though instead of explaining that she saw a GPS scan that looked like Karachi was going to attack Ayanokoji, she simply says that it's unrelated. Rian, however, doesn't believe her, and states that he'll just have to talk to Karachi himself. Nanase successfully convinces Rion to let her do the talking, and she learns that Utomiya paid Karachi to target Ayanokoji. She asks if he has any information at all about Komiya's attack, but he doesn't seem to know anything. Nanase then updates Rion on what she learned, prompting him to target Utomiya next. She, however, knows of another unknown witness at the crime scene, and trades that information to Rion in order to prevent him from talking to Utomiya. Ayanokoji and Sato found a handful of stickers, which they've taken photos of to save for later. You then find out that Sato is seeking to improve her class standing, so Ayanokoji tells her that achieving better grades would be a good start. She would love for him to be her personal tutor, but he pushes her in Horikita's direction. Back at the venue, Yagami takes over for Horikita, allowing her to grab some lunch. Kushida winds up joining her, and they discuss how she still plans to expel Horikita, Ayanokoji, and now Yagami. Horikita really would like to help alleviate Kushida's mental burden, so she recommends for Horikita to drop out. Now, Ayanokoji and Sato finally decide to submit a sticker, which rewards both of them with 100,000 points. They head back to the venue to claim their prize, where Ayanokoji asks if Horikita has been very busy. This event was partially her idea, so it hasn't been that bad, and Ayanokoji wonders who's earned the largest reward so far. Horikita reveals the top participant to be Koenji and his partner, who just so happened to find the sticker worth 500,000 points. They discuss how it's almost a shame that Koenji placed first in the special exam, earning his freedom. However, Horikita refuses to give up on him, as she wants the whole class to work together. Ayanokoji then goes to meet up with Kushida, in order to give her half of his reward. Later that same night, Ayanokoji receives a message from Kei, and immediately steps outside to give her a call. She mentions a certain rumor is going around about Ayanokoji, and she gives him a chance to confess if it's true. 
He's unsure what she's talking about, so he chooses to hold his tongue. And she exclaims that Ayuna Koji is supposedly fooling around with an underclassman. He clearly states this to be false, and asks if she's talked to Sato about them going public. K says yes, he asks if anyone might have overheard, causing her to mention a group of random third years. She snaps back to the important topic, declaring that she'll never allow Ayuna Koji to cheat on her. It's now 1am when you find three teachers sharing a few drinks at the bar. Mashima Sensei points out that not a single second year has dropped out, causing the group to think back on the class vote bonus exam. Mashima then reveals that the next special exam hasn't been used for over 11 years. That means these three were all in their senior year of school the last time it was run, and the women are left completely stunned upon reading the test's name. Chabashira then leaves the bar, and you come to find out that this upcoming exam is the reason that Chabashira and Hoshinomiya didn't graduate from Class A. Hoshinomiya even blames Chabashira, though Mashima Sensei claims they both made the correct choice. This night then comes to an end, with a drunk Hoshinomiya attempting, but failing, to go home with Mashima. The next day, Horikita goes to the private pool to take a gander at the reservation clipboard. She's comparing the different handwritings to the note she received on the island, whenever a first year interrupts her, asking if he can make a reservation. Ishigami's handwriting looks to be somewhat similar to the note, and oddly enough, he already knows Horikita by name. After he leaves, a sick-looking Hoshinomiya sensei strikes up a conversation with Horikita. Kanzaki then cuts in, explaining that Ishigami is a top-ranking freshman, and that he is currently the leader of Class A. Kanzaki then asks about Ayunokoji's hidden power, but Horikita is honestly unable to answer. This conversation then ends with Kanzaki warning Horikita to be very careful, because Ishigami only concerns himself with friends and foes. Though right after he leaves, Ibuki arrives, prompting Horikita to update her on the suspicious Ishigami. However, Ibuki says you don't need to worry about him, because he's much too scrawny to be a threat. You then see Amasawa enter into a room, informing Yagami that the second years are on his trail. He claims it's all according to plan, and approaches the obviously afraid Amasawa, asking why she's trying to protect Ayanokoji. She attempts to play dumb, but he's already aware that she interfered with Kushida and Karachi on the island. Yagami turns out to be a white room student, and the person who gave Horikita the note. Yagami then grabs a hold of Amasawa's arms, revealing that he was originally planning to beat the absolute shit out of her, but he's changed his mind, as she was already punished by Shiba-sensei. At 2am, Ayanokoji enters into the concert hall for a secret meeting with Chabashira-sensei. They review everything that's happened with Tsukashiro, followed by her asking if they'll be able to reach Class A. Ayanokoji truly believes they can, as long as their teacher quits dwelling on the past. He then begins to play the piano as Tsukashiro appears from the shadows, complimenting Ayanokoji's musical ability. Chabashiro begins making excuses for this meeting, but it doesn't really matter because Tsukashiro is no longer the director. He politely asks for Ayanokoji to drop out one final time, warning him that the White Room's efforts will only increase from here on. Ayanokoji declines, they shake hands, and the former director orders them to return to their rooms, or else he'll be forced to report that a male student and female teacher have been sneaking off together. It was a short summer vacation, but they finally return to the school, and begin going about their lives as normal. K and Ayanokoji agree that tomorrow will be the day that they officially go public with their relationship. Next, they share a bit of kissing, before Ayanokoji gets lost in his thoughts. He thinks about how this love affair has entered its final stage, and about whether or not Kei Karuizawa has matured enough to thrive completely on her own.